to Frederick County Public Library's Virtual Caterpillar to Butterfly, our four-part series. And today we're on the third part of that four-part series. And we're going to get to see our caterpillars go into chrysalis. And I got some great footage of that happening. So let's watch that now. So look, this is exciting. So the caterpillars have gotten huge and they've crawled to the very top of this enclosure and they've gone into something called a J shape. And what that means is they're ready to go into chrysalis. They've attached themselves with some silky thread to the top of the mesh and they hang down and form that shape like a perfect J. Okay, I turn my back for a minute and look what's happening. The J-shape caterpillar is turning into a chrysalis and you can see his skin is kind of um, peeled back and is up at the very top and that's going to drop any second. Okay, so this guy is getting really close to being completely into chrysalis. He dropped the outer skin of his caterpillar um, shell and it dropped to the bottom of the cage. So our caterpillar is completely in chrysalis and a monarch butterfly's chrysalis is very unique. It's that light green color and if you can see at the top it has that gold band and down at the bottom it has those gold dots. It looks like a little jewel and it's beautiful. And as this chrysalis goes along and the butterfly is developing inside of there, you can actually start to see the wings and the wing pattern through the sides of the chrysalis, which is pretty cool. Wow, wasn't that amazing watching our caterpillars turn into chrysalis? I can't wait to see what happens next. So I thought in this program, we'll talk a little bit about why monarchs, why are they so special? Well, I in particular love monarchs because they migrate and they are the only species of butterfly that migrate. Now, what does migration mean? It basically means going from one place to another. And monarchs in the fall take a very long journey, almost 3,000 miles. They will travel from Maryland all the way down to the Sierra Madre Mountains in Mexico, which is quite a long journey. So we're gonna show you a little map and we're gonna explain how that happens. Okay, so here we have our map of the United States of Mexico. And there we are way up there in Frederick, Maryland. And I have four butterflies to represent the four butterflies it's gonna to take to do this great migration. So the first butterfly will start off in early spring in the Sierra Madre mountain range in Mexico. It's gonna wake up from kind of a deep sleep and it's gonna migrate up to Southern Texas. It's gonna lay an egg and that butterfly will hatch and fly up further north. So it's gonna go up to let's say Florida, northern Florida, and then the same process is gonna happen again. It lays an egg, that butterfly hatches, the next butterfly um, goes further north to let's say southern Maryland, and then the last butterfly, the fourth one, will lay its egg, will hatch out, and this butterfly will fly all the way up to Frederick. Now some butterflies are able to make it all the way up to southern Canada, but we're gonna talk about our town, Frederick. So when this fourth generation butterfly, the great, great, great grandchild of this butterfly hatches out, it somehow knows to make this long journey over two months, over a thousand plus miles back down to the Sierra Madre Mountains in Mexico. So there it goes flying all the way down where it will overwinter in the mountains and the process will get, begin again next year in early spring. So that's a pretty amazing journey for just this tiny little butterfly. Well, we had a really fun program today. We got to watch our caterpillars go into chrysalis and we got to learn a little bit about what makes monarchs so special. And that's that long migration they take every year in the fall down to Mexico. And that's really important. And there's some ways that you can help monarchs along the way. And we're going to talk about that next week when we do our release. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.